very much for the nice introduction and uh, welcome to San Luis Obispo. The weather's been awesome all week. I think we have one more day left before the rain comes in this weekend, but of course all of us being involved with agriculture, we welcome the rain coming in too. But what I'm going to do with the welcome is just introduce you quickly to the agriculture here in the county and some of the issues that you might think about when you're out uh, with your tours and talking to some of the ag producers uh, that you might see uh, in, in your tour today and in, in some of your um, breakout sessions. So uh, when we look about agriculture in San Luis Obispo County, in fact, we have a, well, we used to have a map up there. <laughs> uh, I didn't plan that, but that's a nice little uh, lead in. Uh, we have the uh, coastal range that runs through the middle of the county and it really creates a lot of diversity of climate and soils and those types of things. So uh, we're fortunate that we have such a diversified um, environment here in the county for, from an agricultural standpoint. So when you're looking at west of the, uh, of, the, of the range that runs through the county, we have that moderate coastal climate. And on the inland side, we have the hot summers and the cool winters. And so that leads to a different type of agricultural cropping pattern and uh, allows us to produce a, a great diversity of different types of crops. Now, along the coast, we have a thriving nursery industry. You're, you'll see some greenhouse production and that type of thing. And we have avocado, citrus, uh, and in the coastal valleys, we. Uh, have a, a really great uh, vegetable industry, um, Santa Maria Valley and the Rio Grande Valley that's really a high level of production for vegetables. Um, and of course we have the wine grape region here now. This is uh, part of the Edna Valley by San Luis Obispo, grows the white wines. And, uh, and in the North County in the Paso Robles we have a real thriving uh, wine grape industry with the red wines. Uh, cattle grazing has been a real predominant use over the years, uh, so that certainly continues. Uh, and we have, uh, we still have uh, dry land grain production, wheat, barley, and oats, and so we really do have a diversity of uh, local crops here. Uh, looking at it statewide, of course, in California, we have a huge diversity. We produce over 300 major crops, and if you look at California agriculture and compare it to all the other countries in the world, it would be the fifth largest uh, producer of agricultural commodities as a country compared to all the other countries in the world. So uh, we're definitely on the map when it comes to agriculture. So um, to talk about uh, some of the support structure that you might uh, have in your particular county uh, and what we have here, uh, we're really fortunate to have a College of Agriculture here in San Luis Obispo County at Cal Poly with the School of Agriculture. And so that's a wonderful support structure to those that uh, like to teach agriculture and include it in your curriculum. And in, in, in each county, you'll have an agricultural commissioner, which is where I work, and a cooperative extension. So I would encourage you to tap into the resources there. Uh, the Agricultural Commissioner puts out an annual crop report every year. I have a file for the tour that we're going on later. I'll pass those out. But it shows all of the different crops in the county produced, and uh, that might be able to be of a resource to you. And the Cooperative Extension is just a wonderful resource as far as uh, doing community gardens and lo local interest in agriculture. In fact, we've teamed up with our Cooperative Extension. We've started a new community garden next to our office in San Luis Obispo. And, uh, I'm sure there's many of those in the different parts of the states where you all are, and you, you, that might be a great place for a field trip or something like that. And uh, lastly, I'd just like to introduce a couple of the key issues that agriculture is facing now that you might keep in mind. Sound effects. <laughs> um, first of all, the, and, uh, there's a number of environmental issues that are facing agriculture. And um, of course, uh, we need environmental protection, and there's a great many benefits from uh, protecting the environment. But from an agricultural standpoint, this really creates a number of challenges uh, as far as producing uh, agricultural crops and horticultural crops in the state. So you might be hearing a bit about some of the challenges that come forward with that uh, here. Uh, secondly, uh, there's a really a big movement in local marketing of food. Uh, you'll hear about carbon footprint and food miles and all these kinds of things. And so. Uh, uh, there's a huge movement in the state for local production and local marketing of food. Um, again, um, like uh, we produce, uh, you know, seventy million dollars worth of broccoli every year. We have to eat a lot of broccoli here to market it all. In fact, most of it goes to Japan. So uh, there's a limit in uh, that type of thing. But uh, there is a, a great movement really towards local marketing. And uh, a couple of the other things you might notice is some of the uh, land use planning uh, issues that have faced agriculture. So uh, when we have a strong economy, of course, you have a, a great deal of urban growth and urban sprawl in the state, which creates challenges for agriculture, which has slowed down some. Uh, but nevertheless, there's a great deal of competition for land and water between agriculture and other types of uses in the state. And I think some of your speakers will be talking about that as well. 
Uh, what kind of fits into that here locally is uh, ag tourism. You know, there's a really great symbiotic relationship between tourism and agriculture here. Uh, when I started working for the county, we had three wineries in the county, and now we have over 300. And so uh, they, there's really a huge market for tourism. Uh, I understand to have a wedding at one of our wineries, it's uh, $10,000 for six hours. That's the going rate. And, and they're booked up a year in advance. And so that, that doesn't include the, uh, the wine or the table settings or the food or the flowers or the photography or anything. That's just the rent for the facility. Um, and so you can see uh, as a wine grape producer, you would, you would think this ag tourism stuff and uh, other sorts of related activities are wonderful. Uh, as a local uh, county official, it creates all sorts of uh, land use issues and you know what's appropriate on agricultural land and all these things as well. But uh, you might hear a little bit about that as well. So with that, I just like to, my final thought I'd like to leave you with, and, and whenever you deal with agriculture, the only thing that's certain is change. Uh, <laughs> agriculture is changing rapidly, uh, and it will continue to change rapidly. And just to think this is how it is, and this is how it's going to be, it probably be, wouldn't be the best way of looking at it. Uh, so it's not a static industry at all, um, and so it's rapidly changing. So I would certainly keep that in mind as you go through your different sections of the curriculum. With that, I'd like to turn it back over to Judy and go on to the next section.